What's up, guys? It's Jay, more than kill, and I'm back here on my road to 30. This is a series that I do on my channel where each week we take one year of my life and we talk about the significant memories and events that have come to shape the person that I am today. And right now, I am 29 motherfucking years old. By the time this series is done, I will be 30 motherfucking years old. And this is episode 25, which means in this episode, that's right, I am 25 motherfucking years old. And I was actually seriously contemplating actually ending this series after the last episode, not only because it's extremely emotional talking about that, but this part of my life is actually where, you know, it really comes into play that I'm living the life that I'm about to start talking about right now. Like, it's a lot easier to talk about things that I've done in the past because you could disassociate yourself with that. But right now, this is pretty much leading up to the person that I am today. And last episode, we left off with my fiance. She, uh, she took her own life. She killed herself. And it was a terrible tragedy. It really was. Uh, she didn't really think very, very long and hard about it. It was a very rash and very, uh, you know, I guess, uh, impulsive decision. And I hate it today that she did make that decision. But like I said, she did have a number of health problems. And also, when you stack that upon the fact that she lost her child, that is, uh, that is very heartbreaking. Trust me. Cause I, I know what it's like to not be there for your child. And, uh, you know, to put myself in her shoes, uh, it, it's really, it's really a judgment call at that situation. I really do support the fact that if a human being, doesn't want to live anymore, they should be able to take their own lives. I just wish that they maybe get a little bit of counseling first, talk to somebody, be vocal about it, instead of just holding it all in and uh, pretty much ending it and throwing in the towel right there. But that's probably going to be one of the last times that we're going to talk about that situation because that is a very touchy subject. It borders on the line of politics and I don't like to talk about religion, politics, or anything of that sort because then you start getting into a very gray area where pretty much every opinion can be right and none can be wrong. But let's get back onto the topic. I was living in California for a little bit after she died. I think it was probably about maybe like a month, month and a half. And everything around me just kind of really reminded me of her. I mean, I wasn't in California very long before I met her. I was probably there maybe about a year, 10 months, somewhere around there. But like I said, yeah, everything in California pretty much held a significant memory of me and my fiance. So uh, I, I couldn't stay there. I remember we went to a Red Robin and it was right across the street from where we used to live. And uh, my buddy, I mean, it was an honest mistake. They were just trying to take me out for a few beers, get a burger, shit like that. But, uh, you know, I just broke down. I just got the fuck out of there. I was like, dude, you right across the street, man. What the fuck? And he was like, oh, shit. You know, it's an honest mistake. I don't really hold it against him for anything like that. But, uh, you know, it's just something that I probably never get over in my life. But, uh, you know, something that I'm just going to have to live with. And it's hard to live with that. But... Let's move on. Like I said, everything reminded me of her in California. So I decided to sell my car and uh, a few other belongings that were able to be, uh, you know, brought with me. One was a giant fucking toolbox that would have cost like a thousand dollars to ship. And I was like, I am not fucking shipping this giant fucking toolbox. So what I did was I packed up all my shit in the boxes and I fucking shipped that out there. Sold the toolbox. I sold the car. And I grabbed a plane ticket back to New Jersey. Now, this probably was a really, I guess, impulsive decision as well. Something I probably should have uh, really thought over a little bit more. But I, I did it with my gut. I did it with my emotion. And that's what I've done my entire life. Is when I feel something inside. I'm just like, I gotta do this. I gotta see exactly where this is gonna lead me. And right then and there, you know, in all my pain and suffering... I felt I needed to be close to people that actually gave a fuck about me. Even though my friends out there, you know, they gave a slight fuck about me. I didn't really feel the type of love and fucking, you know, that I was trying to get at that point. So, uh, I did make a mistake and I moved back in with my son's mother for about like a month and a half, two months. Just as a landing pad until I could get on my feet. And she was actually really cool with it. I explained to her what happened. She was actually really sympathetic. Like I said... We don't hate each other. 
Uh, my baby's mama might be, you know, we might have our little bit of problems. We might have our, you know, our, our tiffs, our quarrels, our scuffles. You know what I mean? But there's no real hatred there. I don't hate the woman. It's just that we were not meant to be together. We were just, we're better off as friends than we were as lovers. And, uh, you know, the fact that we were ex-lovers made it hard for us to be a roommate together when I did live there quite a few years earlier. But at this point... I had grown up quite a bit, you know, I wasn't, I didn't have no jelly streak in me, she didn't have any feelings left for me either, so uh, it was actually very, very neutral, and it allowed me to spend more time with my son, and uh, that's where I really needed to be right there, was with my son at that point, because, uh, like I said, I, I, I had a fucking hole in my heart the size of fucking California, and it needed to be filled, and, uh, you know, I, I did spend quite a few, uh, quite a few days with my son there we did have a lot there's this one time let me tell you something oh my god all right my kid was a real big bob the builder fan he loves bob the builder he had like these bob the builder boots he had the fucking work belt you know with the fucking screwdriver pouch and everything the fake drill and he had a bob the builder hat and it broke my heart because my son is actually a very, very big fucking kid. At this time, he's what? Like, uh, it was this, I think this was like 2007. So he, yeah, he was around like four or five years old right now. And, uh, you know, he was at that point to where he hit a growth spurt and he was tall as fuck. I mean, he was like third, fourth, fifth grader size at the age of fucking four. This kid came up to, like, my fucking stomach. He was huge. He was just a big fucking kid. But he was young. And the thing is with young kids is that they don't sell them in certain sizes. You know, he loves Bob the Builder. But they're not going to sell Bob the Builder stuff for a kid that's in fourth grade. Because fourth grader kids were into other stuff besides Bob the Builder. So it kind of broke my heart watching my son put on his Bob the Builder hat, which was clearly made for a smaller sized head, and my son, I, I, you know, he was born by C-section, I told you guys that, his head was too big to make it out of the vagina, he inherited my head, I have a literal fucking melon, like my fucking head, if I put on a fitted hat, it's somewhere around like eight and three quarters, and that's without my hair, with my hair, I could probably pull off a nine nine and a quarter which is absolutely if you think about it like the average size for a person i think is like seven and three eighths i think so my head is like four sizes bigger than yours bitch <laughs> i got a melon so he was trying to put on his fucking hat and it broke my heart i'm looking at him I'm like oh my god that hat looks silly it's kind of stretched out but i don't want to say anything to him because this is the first time in my son's life when he's actually gonna realize that he's growing older and that some of the things that he likes, you know, back in the past, he might have to leave behind him. And I remember how that felt as a kid when people were like, you look silly, you're playing that, or you're fucking, you like that TV show or shit. Because I was a real big fan of the Power Rangers. And, I mean, I was a little bit older than the Power Ranger generation. Like, a lot of you guys out there that are like 24, 25, you're like, Power Rangers, yeah! But you gotta remember, I was like 12 years old. When I liked the Power Rangers, and that was like when the original Power Rangers were out. So, I mean, I know what it feels like, and it breaks my fucking heart to watch my son and be like, man, my son is gonna experience things in life that I have no control over. And that's just, I don't know why, but it just, it really brought me back to a time when I was a kid, and I was like, man, that made me sad. Like, there's this one time, I, I don't even know why I'm remembering this right now, but. Uh, me, my mom, and this was before my brother left, so it was me, my mom, and my brother, and we were at a place called, uh, Princeton Market Fair, which was just built at the time, and it was fucking huge, like, people were coming from all over New Jersey to see this, especially being in Princeton, very well-known, very renowned town inside of our state, so, I mean, it was, like, a huge thing, and they had, like, Best Buys at Walmarts, I think it was, like, the first Walmart in New Jersey at that time, they had like Home Depot, fucking, you know, Sam's Clubs, all that fucking shit in there, and people were flocking all over, and they were giving out like fucking balloons, and I remember that I had my balloon, and my fucking string on the balloon, I had it tied around my wrist, 
I love balloons. I, I loved balloons as a kid. I was probably like five or six years old at this time. And my string snapped off my wrist. And my balloon went flying in the sky. And then my my balloon never came back. I don't know why that's sad. But I think that's that's the time like when I was a kid that I realized, you know, that that, that things can leave you and never come back. Things that you love, things that you want, and you can just you can just watch it slip through your hands and go away. And there's nothing you can do about it. And just thinking about that, like, you know, the innocence of a kid and like the, the how deep it is that a kid can realize that things can leave and never come back from something as simple as a balloon leaving or a hat being too big, you know? It's just, it's crazy. But we got off topic right now. Uh, I was hanging out with my son. I was uh, living with my baby's mom at this time. And I tried to transfer from the Walmart that I worked at in Merced. And I tried to transfer to one very close to uh, my baby's mama's house. And they weren't having it. They were like, no, you are not allowed to transfer. Walmart does not allow that. Uh, you have to put in like 90 days and work at your other Walmart before you got to transfer. And I was like, this is absolutely fucking bullshit. I was like, dude, the only reason I had to fucking leave is because my fiance fucking died. And I showed them all the paperwork and everything. And they were like, oh, oh, we didn't know this was the case. So I was like, yeah, that's the fucking case, motherfucker. I told the other Walmart out in California that. And they're like, well, some lines must have got crossed. What really happened was they felt or they smelt some type of lawsuit or some type of, like, you know, discrimination going on. And they're like, we got to get this guy a job. We got to get him fast. We fucked up. So they actually gave me a job very, very close to where I was staying. And it was actually pretty cool because I used the last of the money I had uh, from selling my toolbox and from selling my fucking car. And I bought a fucking Mitsubishi Eclipse. Now this Eclipse wasn't the greatest. It had a really decent body, but it had like 170,000 motherfucking miles. That is, a, that is a lot of motherfucking miles on a little Japanese car from like 1994. I'll put a picture of it up on the screen right now so you can see it. It was actually a pretty decent looking car. Uh, to be a little bit funny, I did take a Sawzall and I saw the muffler off. Just for the fuck of it, so when I go around, it's like, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> I don't know why I did it. I was just at work one day. I was really fucking bored, and I decided this eclipse needs a little bit of sound to it. So I just saw the fucking muffler off. <laughs> but uh, I worked at Walmart for like the next month. Like I said, I spent about a month and a half, two months with my baby's mama, and they actually were trying to find a reason to fire me because they didn't want me to have that job in the first place. And, like usual, I fuck up, and I do the dumbest shit ever. I am leaving out of the parking lot. It was like 10 o'clock at night. They were all closed down in the back. There is no customers back there. And on my way out, I might have fucking slammed on the gas, done about 60 miles an hour, and just pulled the e-brake for the fuck of it. And did a huge fucking little fucking drift around it. I didn't really drift because I just pulled the e-brake and just let it fucking go. I did like two or three 360s. I wouldn't even call them donuts because, you know, it's a front-wheel drive car. It's just going to go, you know, around. And it was absolutely fucking hilarious. However, the next day coming into work, it was just like a repeat of the Target scene. They called me into the office and they sit me down and they show me the security footage of me being an asshole and fucking around with my car off the clock. And they're like, we can't have this. This is a huge risk to customers, blah, blah, blah. Even though there's nobody around and there's nobody around in the area, it was a huge lot in the back of the store that nobody ever went back there unless they were working at the auto shop and the auto shop was closed for like the last two hours. So basically they just looked for any type of fucking reason to fire me and they fired me, which is no big deal because they did have a valid reason to fire me. That is reckless. That is stupid. But they probably should have just given me a warning instead of firing me flat out. But you know what? That is in the past and I can't change that because you know what? Shit happened. So uh, it was actually for the better though because I went and I started looking at jobs, started looking at applications, putting them in, talking to people. 
And uh, on my way back from a junkyard to get a few parts for my Eclipse that I needed just to kind of fix up the taillights and everything, because uh, there is a little area in the back that was like a filler panel that was all wavy and cracked up, and it really bothered me, and I wanted to fix it. So I went to a junkyard, picked up a few parts, and on my way back, there is a dealership there, and I was dirty as fuck, but I didn't really give a fuck, so I just pulled in and I seen a sign that they said, Help Wanted. So I went in and I was like, Ew. And they were like, you <laughs> they weren't really like that but that's just my way of saying you know i went in there and was like hey what's up guys you know i'm looking for a job blah 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 this is what i could do blah 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 and he was like you're dirty as fuck i was like yeah i was just in a junkyard blah blah I started talking about my my clips what i wanted to fix on it and the dude was like that's fucking awesome you know we really want to fucking hire people that know what the fuck you're doing and the fact that you're in a junkyard by yourself it's 9 o'clock in the morning on a Monday, and uh, you weren't afraid to come in here and put a job application in. They're like, look, we want you to come in tomorrow, start, and uh, they were going to give me run of this area down there where basically, uh, you know, I would sit in the fucking air-conditioned office all day. People would come in. I'd write them up for a service. Then I'd pull their car in, and if it was, like, just, like, a tire rotation, fucking balancing tires, fucking oil changes, shit like that, just basic fucking maintenance, I would do it bring it back and fucking they would pay me and that was uh pretty much how it did and i made really good money working at this dealership which actually gave me enough money to go back to the area where i was living at before yes i did i moved back into the fucking hood i don't know why but i really didn't want to stay living with my baby's mama she had already you know shown a little bit of gratitude a little bit of leeway with me and let me stay there so i can get on my feet and I didn't really want to push it any further than it already was and, uh, you know, have it blow up again. So I wanted everything to be kept on a very civil, very serene level. I didn't need any stress in my fucking life. So what I did was I took the money that I made from this job and I got an apartment. Well, it wasn't an apartment. It was a house. It was a three-bedroom house. And this is where I would meet my black dad. <laughs> this is what... All my friends called the landlord of this house because uh, it was basically three rooms in a house and he rented the rooms out to people and uh, me and two other guys were living there. It was like 125 bucks a week, which was swingable. That wasn't that bad. So uh, basically, if the other people didn't have their rent, that wasn't on me. My room, my rent was with my own fucking deal. So I didn't have to come up with like, you know, putting together rent money with other people and worrying about getting evicted like I did in California. So uh, it was actually a really nice house. Uh, it, like I said, it wasn't in the greatest of neighborhoods, but it was pretty decent. Three bedrooms. I had the big bedroom. Came with an air conditioner. It already came with a bed, fucking furniture, TV. I didn't need shit. All I had to do was just move in here and park in the goddamn fucking alleyway. Everything was easy, motherfucking peasy, lemon motherfucking squeezy. And I was actually really fucking happy there. And uh, I, I thought this was a really good way for me to, uh, like, I was still near my friends. I was still close to my son and my baby's mama. And I lived very close to my work. So everything was actually working out very well. And even the other two roommates, one of them was a chef and the other one was a roofer. So they were up all types of times in the day, hours. And they would fucking, dude, I swear to God, I fucking found out that they were doing coke. And I was like, what up? You got you guys doing coke? And they're like, yeah. I was like, dude, check this out, man. Stop going out there and getting beat in this fucking neighborhood, man. Look, you come to me. I'll hook you up. So basically, they paid my rent. I would go to work. I would do my job. I would, on the way home, I would pick up a gram of coke. I'd come home. I'd cook that shit up into a little bit of rock. And every now and then, a little $20 bill would slide underneath my door. And I would shave another piece off the rock. And I would slide it underneath the door. And I'd take my $20. They were paying my motherfucking rent. And now, every now and then, like, the $20 bills just kept fucking coming. These guys were fiends and a motherfucking half. But I didn't give a fuck because I needed to do what I needed to do to keep myself afloat. To make sure that I'm living a very comfortable life. Because I've, I've just, I've had it hard the last few months. Shit was real hard. And the fact that, you know, shit started getting a little bit easier, it's, it really does. It, it's so easy to give in to that type of life and to just be like, man, fuck it. Uh, the, the money's here. Why the fuck would I not do this? So this actually went on for about 
six or seven months. And, uh, you know, it, everything was good. I was fucking making a lot of money. My rent was fucking taken care of. And I was hanging out with my friends out in the area. And we were just fucking chilling. And then, one day, I'm sitting in my office. And a woman walks in. And she just needs an oil change. And I'm like, yeah, that's no problem, whatever. And I start looking at all this. I notice she has these shoes on that were skull prints. They were like Converse, but they had like little skulls, little pink bows on them. And you guys know me. That's my style. I love like, I love things that are kind of weird and kind of like girly, but also still kind of badass at the same fucking time. And you know, I love pink. So I was like, hey, you know, did, did we go to high school together? I, it was like the worst fucking pickup line in the world. But I didn't know how old this woman was, and I didn't want to offend her by being like, Hey, you know, uh, how old are you? You know, you don't want to just come out and ask a girl how old they are. So if you ask something like that, and you gauge their response, you'll be able to get an idea of exactly how old they are. And uh, she was like, <laughs> She's like, high school? With me? Kid, I am like 20 years older than you. And I was like, oh, I'm, I'm sorry, you know, hand me the keys pull her car in and I start fucking working on it start checking it out and I glance over my shoulder and she's standing in the office looking through the window watching me bet over on her car working I, I look back and she kind of blushed and looked away and I was like oh yeah <laughs> so anyway I fucking start working on the car I'm doing my thing I know that she's over there looking so I make sure you know I give a couple of extra tugs and a, uh, you know a good good grunt, you know, flex the fucking bicep a little bit. Maybe I'll, I'll take my dirty hand and I'll wipe it across my sweaty brow and get my brow a little bit sweaty. Be like, yeah! I'm a man. <laughs> I'm a fucking weird fellow, ain't I? But anyway, yeah, I was putting on a little bit of an extra show. More than I usually would. Like when I'm lowering the lift, you know, I'm making sure I'm stomping on the metal extra loud so everything I'm doing it sounds like I'm doing it with a fucking authority and I'm just... I'm just the man. So I fucking call her in there and I'm like, hey, look, you know, you got fucking axle seals are leaking a little bit. I recommend you get this. I tried selling her like $1,500 worth of motherfucking work to her car. And she wasn't trying to have it, but I was like, look, 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 check this. Get in the car and I'll drive you over to the other side, to the service side, and we'll write you up and we'll get everybody to diagnose exactly what your car did. She's like, all right, now... I wasn't actually trying to sell her services, I was trying to get her in the car with me alone. Because as soon as she got in the car with me, I drove her, in her own car mind you, to the other side. We made the appointment, and then when I was walking her out, I was like, so uh, why don't you give me your number? Give you a call later, maybe get together, have a few beers, see what happens. And she was feeling it. She was like, all right, what's up? And I actually had a cell phone at this point. So I handed it to her. I was like, here, put your number in my phone. That's what I used to do because I would never ask them for the numbers because I'm half deaf. So sometimes I would hear it a little fucked up. So I would hand them the phone. I'm like, go ahead, put your number in here. And then she did. And I, I don't know why, but like 15 minutes later, I was like, man. I bet you that was the wrong fucking phone number she gave me. So I fucking star 67 did, so it blocked my number. And I called, and she actually picked up. I thought it was going to go to the answer machine. She's like, hello? And I was like, hey, what's up? She's like, who's this? It's like, the guy that just worked on your car. And she's like, oh, that, that, was, that was quick. I was like, yeah, no, you know, I was just talking to a few guys here, blah, blah, blah. And, uh, you know, um, we should stop at Applebee's, uh, you know, after work tonight, have some beers. And she was like, all right, that sounds kind of cool. And uh, <laughs> we actually ended up hanging out later on that night. Uh, I didn't have any beers because I was driving. I was just trying to get her to come out. Uh, she did have a beer, but she lived like probably about like two or three blocks down the road. So she was going to be all right. And then we were just chilling. You know, we had a little bit of dinner. And then I was like, I was like, man, you know, I'm about to get the fuck out of here. And she's like, well, why don't you come back to my place and we'll hang out. Maybe we'll have some coffee. And uh, I've already figured out how old she was at this point. She was she was in her 40s. She's 20 years older than me. And I was like, coffee. 
I know from Grand Theft Auto what coffee means to older people. <laughs> so we went back to her house and we had ourselves a little bit of hot coffee. Hot coffee about 15 hours after I met her, which was actually fucking amazing. And I, I let me tell you, I put some cream in that coffee, stirred it up real nice and good. It was a damn good, satisfying drink. <laughs> so anyway, I would end up hanging out with this girl very, very often for the next few fucking months. And things are actually going pretty fucking good, especially at the place that I'm working at, except one day on the way to work. I was just cruising to work, and I had the fucking music going, because I had this big-ass system in the back, right? I had, like, fucking, like, 312s, I had an amp, I had, like, little tweeters all over and shit. I was fucking on my way to work, I had fucking, I had that shit, like, boom, 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 boom. I can't do a beatbox, and Gotham Lion could do a beatbox better than me, but I was fucking, I had some loud-ass music, it's like, 8 o'clock in the morning on the way to work, I had the windows down, I'm fucking blazing a joint on the way to work, I'm like... Yeah, gotta go to work, you know, because I didn't work very far from, so uh, just having the windows open made me a little bit, so I didn't smell like the reefer all the time, you know what I mean? But I do use marijuana to mellow myself out, so when I'm going to work, I don't act like the type of person you hear right now, all hyper, all super amped up, all fucking, this is the person that I am when I'm not fucking smoking marijuana. When I smoke marijuana, I'm like, hey going on man <laughs> I'm dead fucking serious so uh anyway I was on the way to work and I heard click 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 I was like what the fuck was that I fucking limped the car all the way to work I put that shit on the lift the motherfucking motor blew a balance shaft and all types of goddamn fucking problems happened in there basically the motor just keeled over and died like I said it had like a hundred and seventy some thousand motherfucking miles on that Eclipse before I bought it anyway. I didn't pay a lot for it, so I was like, fuck it. I took all my audio equipment out. I called the Junkers. The Junkers came and picked it up. I got like $400 for it because, like I said, the body on it was really, really straight. And all they had to do was just put another fucking $100 motor in, and they would have sold it for $1,500 profit. Bing, bang, boom. Easy motherfucking money. I didn't want to be fucking dealing with it, so what I did was I sold that. I was going to take the rest of my money and find a cheap car. However, later on that week, a customer would come in and buy a brand new Mustang. And this was when the fucking dealership was having a wholesale where, like, they would say, Bring any car in! Any fucking car! And we'll give you $1,500 trading for it. So... Somebody thought they were being smart and brought in like an early 80s Impala station wagon with like a 4.8 V8 in it. Like not even a 305. It was a really small fucking V8. And uh, man, nobody really wanted this. It was like the biggest shitbox in the world. It was covered with surface rust everywhere. This thing was the biggest pile of shit. It had no back seats, no carpet, nothing. And they got $1,500 trade in value on it. So the dealership was like, we need to get this shit off the lot right fucking now. And I was just fucking around with the sales manager. And I was like, I'll give you a dollar for it. And he was like, boom, sold. And I was like, what? He's like, yep, you just bought that car for a dollar. I was like, hell yeah, brought that shit in. They charged me tax. They charged me tax, which uh, the lowest amount of tax that the fucking car dealership could do was on like a hundred dollars so and it ended up costing me like nine dollars to get this fucking car off the lot you know what i did i drove that shit three blocks away i called the same fucking wreckers they came out and gave me another four hundred motherfucking dollars so now i had eight hundred dollars in my pocket and no motherfucking car however i would go on craigslist and i would see i shit you not 15 minutes after this car was posted online it was a Toyota Paseo. Not the greatest of cars, but they were advertising as 40,000 original miles, still plastic on the back seats, blah blah blah. Adult owned, maintained all receipts, recently had the time and belt and everything done, and I'm like, this is too good to be true. But you know what? I, I wanted to go look at it anyway. It was like 35 minutes away. Dude, I fucking paid one of my buddies. He's like, dude, get me up there right now. We went 
all the way to fuck up goddamn the Delaware River, and we found where the car was sitting, and it was in one of the richest motherfucking areas of New Jersey. And the old lady just bought a brand new Miata, and she was like, I have no use for this. I, I'm serious. This lady was literally like 70, 75 years old, driving around little two-door sports cars. I thought it was actually pretty cute, you know? But she was like, look, I'm selling it, blah, blah, blah. She wanted to do it legitimately. She's like, so if you buy this, you got to come like a couple days later with tags and insurance. That way, you know, she doesn't get sued from fucking people just driving it away. Like what I would do at the time is I would slap on my license plates that I had for my last car and I would have somebody follow behind me so no cops got behind me to run my motherfucking plates. That is how you get a car home. That is probably the most widely used way to get a car that you just bought home. Everybody fucking does it. But she wasn't hearing it. And I told her, I was like, look, check this out. Boom! $600 cash right there. And I was like, I'll be back in two days to pick up my car. Signed the receipt. She even photocopied my driver's license. This lady was by the book. And this is actually where I picked up my technique for selling things to people. Like, you know, getting all their information and make sure your ass is covered. This lady taught me a really valuable lesson. But two days later, I got out of there with a car that literally was brand fucking new. Even though it was a 95 and this was like 2007, it literally had no wear and tear on it. Fucking spotless. Even the fucking back seat still had the plastic. The trunk still had the plastic. Underneath the fucking hood, you could literally eat off this. And I was like, yeah, baby, it was a little five-speed, too. Had a sunroof. I was like, I'm going to drive this around for a few years. Or so I would thought, because on my way to work, I would stop into the store next door. I would get my morning shit. It was basically, I would get myself an Arizona iced tea. I would grab myself a bagel and also a few cigars to make it through the day so people, I don't have to strangle them. <laughs> so basically uh the girl that worked there was a girl that i knew from around the way since she was like i should she not like four or five years old i've known her ever since she was a little sproutling and uh she was looking for her first car i told her i was like look you know even though i want to keep this car for myself this is the perfect car for a young girl that needs you know a good car that's gonna last a while that's kind of shiny, and girls like shiny. And also, it was a stick shift, so it got pretty good gas, and it was a Toyota. So, you know, it was going to last a pretty long time. And I offered it to her. I was like, look, give me $3,500 for this car, and I will sell to you. She had $3,500 fucking dollars. She basically bought this car off of me three days after I fucking bought this car. And I sold it for what? What is that, like five, six times profit right there? Boom! Into the money. And when I was actually going to her house to pick up the money, I was bringing the car there. One of my buddies was driving me over there. Her dad came out the house, and he knew who I was, and he got all up in my face. He's like, who the fuck do you think you are trying to take three grand off my girl for a car that's fucking 12 years old? You must be fucking out your mind. I told him, I was like, look, dude, here are the keys. Go take a look at that car. You will not believe how clean that fucking car is. He went out there, took that shit for a ride around the block, looked it over, had even jacked it up, checking for leaks and everything. He, he looked at me, he's like, sorry, man. This this car is everything you said it is. And he looked at his daughter, he's like, buy it right fucking now. And to this day, she still has this fucking car. I'm not even lying. This car is still fucking going it doesn't even have over a hundred thousand miles on it which is absolutely fucking amazing so now i got thirty five hundred dollars in my motherfucking pocket and i go out and i find myself yes another camaro i buy myself an 86 black camaro v8 i wish it had t-tops but it wasn't a t-top car but that's all right because living in new jersey with all the rain and everything you know having a t-top car can suck ass especially when it was wet out the night before and you move and you get the drips that drop on top of your head if the t-tops are old and the weather seals are a little bit fucking you know kind of i guess warped a little bit malformed from all the heat and the fucking weather that new jersey has to fucking offer so i'm actually living it up right now i got my own apartment 
Well, actually, it was a house, but, you know, I got my, I called it my apartment because I only stayed inside my room. It actually did have a washer and dryer, though. That was actually pretty cool. So, uh, I had my own place to live. I had a girlfriend. I had a pretty cool car. I had, like, $2,000 in my pocket. And I was like, what up? I fucking called my mom up, and I was like, look. You have my grandpa's van, which, uh, you know, my grandpa is, he has this fucking huge van! He has a huge Dodge conversion van, well, not anymore because he's dead, but, uh, you know, that kind of sucks, doesn't it? <laughs> but, uh, anyway, uh, he had a huge fucking conversion van, and I had a little bit of extra money in there. There's this dude on Craigslist, he was selling a hood and some headers for a Camaro, and I actually convinced my mother to take the van and give me and my buddy a ride up there. On the way up there, me and my buddy were sitting in the back of the van. And I, yeah, have you ever seen a conversion van? These things are like fucking huge. They have like a little mini bed in the back. Looks like kind of like a little bit of a couch. You pop out the windows and shit. Pop out the little fucking, you know, the sunroof in the back and shit. And it had enough room to hold a hood and shit. It had captain's chairs. Really pimp ass fucking van. And my mom was like, what are you kids doing back there? I was like, no, we come back here because we got these strawberry scented fucking cigars and we don't want to be blowing it all up in your face. And she was like, all right. And we start puffing on it and we were smoking a blunt in the back of my grandpa's conversion van on the way up to go pick up a fucking hood. I don't know why, but this is actually probably one of my favorite stories from this year because we were just chilling, me and my boy hanging out. My mom was up front. She, she was like, that doesn't smell like a cigar. I know what that is. <laughs> And she actually called us out on it, but she didn't really give a fuck, which was kind of cool and a little bit weird, you know, at the same time, because me and my mom never really got along. But the fact that she was like, she knew we were smoking weed, didn't really give a fuck, and she's just driving up the goddamn fucking highway to go pick up this goddamn hood for a car. I was feeling pretty good. I had money in my pocket. I had a girlfriend. I had a car. I had everything going, and I would actually take that hood, and I would actually put it on the car. Uh, one day... One day, it was raining out, right around the corner from where I was living, and the fucking back tires of my Camaro hit a patch of fucking leaves. And you know what happens when the fucking back tires of Camaro start spinning? Yeah, this shit started fishtailing, and I was like, whoa, and I had the fucking wheel going and everything. I shit you not, this was the best maneuver I've ever did. Not only did I get it around the corner, but after the ass end went back, I fucking flipped the goddamn wheel around, and I guided it, and only my front tire hit another car's back tire. No damage at all to the other car. Perfect fucking maneuver. No problem. I just fucking put that shit into fucking gear, and I get the fuck out of there. I'm not staying, bitch. I did not cause any problems to your shit. I'm not staying because the leaves were the problem. Alright, so... <laughs> I would actually fucking... You know, I talked to the goddamn owner of the other car before. He's like, yeah, he saw it. There was no fucking damage. I inspected I told him, I'm a mechanic. If there was damage, I'd fix it for you anyway. So it was no big deal because, you know, he was one of my neighbors. But, uh, yeah, I would actually end up fucking having to paint the hood on my car because I put the hood on with the white hood. I'd actually end up painting that to make sure, uh, you know, nobody in the area knew that it was my car again. <laughs> just in case, just in case other people... Wanted to start problems with it, but, uh, like I said, I've already talked to the owner about it. Everything was fucking fine. But, you know, I wanted to make sure that nobody fucking, uh, you know, gave me a problem. Because some people are fucking dicks. Fucking assholes, man. So, I ended up fucking just rattle canning it with a fucking goddamn spray can. Psh, sprayed my fucking hood black. I put up pictures on here. It actually came out really fucking good and really fucking awesome. So, uh, right as I think that everything is gonna be all right my life is going fucking good uh pretty much my lease is up my black dad who absolutely fucking hates me because my car is loud uh even my clips like i said was loud my music was loud i'm a loud person and uh i think he kind of secretly knew that i was feeding the other guys a little bit of raw every now and then <laughs> a little bit of fucking rock but uh you know I, he, he wanted me out of there. He wasn't going to renew my lease. And uh, I had to find a place to stay. But, like, right when my lease is up, on January fucking 1st, I would go into work and I would find out that the uh, dealership was hit under hard times. And with the recent government motherfucking bailouts, they had to lay some people off. And you know that rule. 
Last hired, first fired. That's right. I would end up getting laid off. So I would go from being on top of the motherfucking world again to being kicked in the balls by reality check tech. Just, just schooling me. And that's where we're going to end it. Right there. My name is Jay. More than after kill. I want to thank you guys for watching. Make sure you guys rate, comment, subscribe. If you could leave a thumbs up on the video, I would highly appreciate it because it gives me motivation to make more videos for you motherfuckers that watch my motherfucking videos. This was episode 25 of my Road to 30, where I pretty much get a lot of experience out of life, but once again, am kicked back into the motherfucking gutter. God damn it. <laughs> so, like I said, my name is Jayboard and After Kill. Make sure you guys rate, comment, subscribe. I want to thank you guys for watching. I'm going to see you guys later. Anyway.